Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. Today is part two, and we are talking about the secret (laughs) sources of listing leads. And as we started out yesterday on part one, the best aspect of these listing lead sources we're sharing with you is the listing lead sources cost you nothing. They're all free. We're not talking to you about buying leads or referral programs or going to some expensive online company that's going to sell you some maybe motivated seller lead. Nope. These are the most direct, easiest, least expensive sources of listing leads that you're going to find. So without any further delay, Julie... Yes, and these are also, as to mention, motivated, but you have less competition and there is no long-term super crazy drip system where you're praying that it'll work out someday. I also should say, for the most part, none of these things that we're suggesting you guys do require that much skill. I mean, the reality of it is, is you have to know what to say and how to say it. You have to have a, an idea of how these different um, types of lead sources work, but it really does not require some sort of high-level sort of, you know, multifaceted four-dimensional chess in order to basically make this business work for you. Now, there's going to be a, a point coming up that a couple points coming up where you do have to have more skill. But for the most part, every single one of you can be, uh, be utilizing these ideas urgently to start listing properties. Because really, at the end of the day, if you want to be successful long term in real estate, you absolutely positively have to be a listing agent. So, Julie? That's right. So, this is part two of our three-part series. And our next point is to connect with short-term vacation rental by owner property owners. Now, you can easily find these listings on different websites that they advertise on. You can click on their schedule and see if it's frequently rented or if perhaps it's not been rented for a long time. Let's give them an example, okay? Sure. So, you want to, Julie wants to buy a house in Camarillo by the Sea. Uh, Carmel by the Sea is a beautiful area in California, but there are several downsides to it. The most important one being it is super expensive. Super ultra expensive. So I told Julie that it, it, you know, the conversation we had is that we can set that as a goal and we could figure out how to accomplish that goal. You know, that's how Julie and I operate. We decide what we're going to do and then we create a plan and then we implement it. And sometimes it takes decades, but we do eventually get there. Yeah. So I said, Jules, so you need to, let's do the math on this and let's show each other how this is actually going to work. How are we, how is it going to benefit us to buy a place there and then make it into a VRBO that we'd use occasionally because we go out there maybe for a week or two per year or uh, versus essentially um, continuing just to be a tenant of somebody else's VRBO. So what Julie did, being the smart lady that she is, she went to VRBO found properties that we'd consider buying and what might be a price range because we know the market well enough there to know what the houses might be worth. And then... Well, and then I can click on the calendar and I can see which ones of them are rented all the time. Like it's a super popular property and there's that seller. Well, I see how I always, I already think of it as a seller, but that, that homeowner um, probably is really loving that VRBO. Yeah. Don't be careful. You're not holding that your dead cat's about to come off. Oh, yeah, you got to put your dead cat back on your mic. Sorry, it's not actually a dead cat. Yeah, so if you're hearing okay. a weird noise like this, it's because Julie had a little technical Sorry. malfunction. Talking with my hands. Yeah. Okay, so some VRBO owners, and you remember these are investors, some of them really love those properties because they're in the right spot, the right price, they're rented all the time. And then the next one that I click on might be like one street over, and it seems like it's never been rented, or maybe just, you know, during Christmas or something predictable. Well, that might be somebody worth talking to, and the conversation is pretty easy. Well, so the point is, is that we're trying to, as potential owners, we're trying to sort of do a real, you know, behind the curtain diagnostic of really what you're thinking, what would the actual cash flow would be uh, like versus the expense and really the opportunity cost of, uh, you know, putting your money into something like that, right? We're doing all the math, the spreadsheeting it out to see if what makes sense. We can click on the day and see what that probably would get for that night. Right. Right. But the reason you guys should do this is if you're looking for listings, you're going to want to look for listings that are VRBOs. And then you can look at the rental calendars to see how frequently they're rented. And what you might discover is there's quite a few VRBOs like Julie just gave you an example of that are failed VRBOs or failing VRBOs. If given an option, the owner would happily sell it because it's not working out rental wise. 
And there are a lot of VRBO. Uh, there were so many, there was so much hype. There still is really about people being able to buy VRBOs and make a lot of money off them. There's people that are leasing, um, a long-term leasing a condo or something in a nice area. And then it's not excluded from their lease with the landlord that they can VRBO it. So there's people that are leasing properties and then turning the lease that they have on a property they don't even own into a VRBO. You guys following me on all this? So you will be shocked how frequently a lot of people meandered into ownership of some of these, even just straight up rentals or VRBOs, not really having done a lot of research on what the viability of that thing is in terms of cash flow, and they're actually losing money on it every month from cash flow, or they just want their money out. Maybe they feel like the house is appreciated enough, and it's their time, uh, their opportunity to hit the exit. Yes, that's very common right now. Is that maybe they got frustrated with it? It wasn't their cup of tea. They're not using it like they thought they would. It's not cash flowing like they thought they would. Meanwhile, the property taxes have gone up because the value's gone up. Well, the good news about that is so has their equity, and that's an easy conversation. Just do a seller's net sheet. They're in or they're out, and. Here's another sideline that, that is motivating some of the VRBOs to sell. A lot of cities and homeowners associations have made short-term rental rules such that the properties no longer make sense for those owners. This is similar to the conversation we talked about uh, with for rent by owners. You might, be in an, you might talk to an investor that's got three or four of these. I'm thinking about, for example, in downtown Austin is a great example of this. A lot of those high-rise condo buildings have specific rules that say no short-term rental for you, right? Or if you do, you have to pay a fine or we're going to report you to the city or something like that. I had a conversation. This was probably three years ago with a broker. I think it was in Miami. It might not have been, but I'm pretty sure it was in Miami. Mm -hmm. And he had a, he was managing VRBOs. Yes. So he would make 10% of whatever the nightly lease was. And then on top of that, then the owner also had to pay for any of the cleaning and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy was making 10% and his business for the most part was all online. He was able to, and he was making millions of dollars a year managing other people's VRBOs. Well, overnight, like inside, it was two weeks or something. And he, I was talking to him because he was wanting to move uh, to EXP Realty. But within a very short period of time, his VRBO business just evaporated because there was a series of laws and regulations and whatever that got passed that made it so street by street, his VRBOs couldn't be short-term rented anymore. And like, for example, we were just talking about Carmel by the Sea. They've got a little ca uh, carve out that if you're in a specific area in that part of California, you can't rent for any less than it's 30 days, isn't 30 it? 30 days, the golden rectangle. Yeah, and they police it too. And if they yeah. find out you're doing short-term rentals, they'll fine you. Now, is any of that stuff really legal if someone were to... You know, I don't, you know, who knows, right? But that is all, these are all reasons why some of these VRBO millionaires or wannabe are going to want to be putting these properties for sale. Um, again, it's also about saturation. Maybe somebody bought a place, Julie gave an example where maybe the zoning changed or mm -hmm. some sort of ordinance was passed that so they couldn't do short-term rentals anymore. But it could very well be that there were a lot of people that decided to become VRBO owners as well. And then maybe it's a building down in, uh, you know, uh, Amelia Island, let's say, that's looking at the ocean. And there are five, it's a building with 300 units and there are only five BRVOs in there. Now there's 150 and none of them are ever getting rented because there's too many options. You guys get it? Yeah. So call these owners directly and you will be surprised how frequently, they, assuming the numbers make sense, to Julie's point earlier about the net sheet, that they'll be happy to dump the properties. It's a version of for rent by owner script, yep. basically. Okay, so next, unusual source of business. Go but ahead. by the way, the for rent by owner script for uh, Premier Coaching members, it's on Premier Coaching. So make sure you download and use that script. And if you're not in Premier Coaching, what the heck are you waiting for? Just text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. If you want to be a, around a bunch of like-minded, uh, forward-focused real estate professionals who are thriving in this market, we're waiting for you over on Premier Coaching. Joining Premier Coaching costs you absolutely nothing. So just text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com, members.timandjulieharris.com. Remember when texting message and data rates may apply. Speaking of Premier Coaching, they also get access to probate. Now, what is probate? It's another unusual source that most agents don't think about very often. Probate is a legal process where the validity and authenticity of a will are determined. It also, the word probate, also refers to the administration of the deceased person's estate 
who did not have a will. So typically the fate of the property will be decided by the beneficiaries or executors or a probate attorney or the combination. States differ in how this is handled, but it's a simple process to learn. The great thing about probate is that once the, you know, all of that legal process has happened, you generally end up with some pretty motivated sellers. If they have decided to not keep the property as heirs, right? Maybe they're gonna split up ownership four ways and they're gonna keep it. But if they decide not to, which is more than likely the case, because yep. who wants to manage, you know, a house that probably needs some work, what have you, then they decide it's got to be sold. And then you connect with probate attorneys and there's a specific process that we teach in, in Premier Coaching that this is a great resource to go after listing leads because not many agents work this. Well, so in Premier Coaching, we do have an expanded probate section. We've always had probate as part of a Premier Coaching, but now we have an actual probate coach that we've hired who is teaching all of you guys how to do probate. There's scripts, there's techniques, letters, letters, everything that you need to really scale out your pro your probate business. And again, to Julie's point, probate is one of those things that's viable in every state in the country. In every kind of market. Too. In every kind of market. And yet agents don't even know about it, let alone how to go after it. And it's, it's really... Now, some markets, I'm sure there's a lot of people chasing probate. But for the most part, it's one of those things that even if you're like let's just you know use real plain words if you're a lower skilled very introverted very analytical type person mm -hmm. and you're not the sales type and you're not real demonstrative or gregorious or all the rest of it probate's perfect for you frankly Absolutely. well it's just a it's a business conversation it's a process yeah it's a process yeah so again probate's part of premier coaching so what the heck are you waiting for join premier coaching and last point oh you know this next one i had a i was reading ahead in your notes mm -hmm. I had a, a coaching client. I'll tell you what his name is. His name is Braden Shoup. Okay. And he was in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. And he made a fortune off your point, your next point here. Okay. Like he was, and he was doing what Julie is about to tell you guys, notice defaults in what was a strong seller's market. And this is going to sound really confusing what I just said until Julie reads this point. Okay. So the point is to work notice of default properties. These are referred to as NODs, notice of default. Remember that just because somebody's missed a payment or multiple payments does not necessarily mean they will be a short sale. I know there's a whole generation of you guys that live in fear of the notorious short sale. But remember that the average homeowner right now that has a mortgage, and 50% of the country doesn't, but if you have a mortgage, the average homeowner has more than 150,000 in equity in their home. Some estimate more than 180,000 at this point of equity in their home. This means that you can sell a house for someone who is in a distressed situation likely without having to negotiate a short sale. Now, you should still know how to do a short sale when necessary, but don't assume that just because maybe somebody's unemployed or they got off track because of COVID or whatever the case may be, they've fallen behind on payments. Statistically, once somebody has missed two payments, they are highly unlikely to get caught up, especially when you add on the fees, late fees, and all that other you know gobbledygook from the lender. So this is why you want to help somebody that's in that distressed situation without living in fear of, oh my gosh, I got to learn short sales. Well, when Julie, Julie and I were coaching and training agents, we were the, from what I understand, the first nationwide company to teach agents how to do short sales back in 2007, 2008. And we worked with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FDIC. We worked Bank with America. all the major servicers. Yeah. And, you know, essentially honing in that short sale system. One of the things, I'll, I'll never forget this, that they said statistically, they know that when someone's missed one house payment, that at that point, they completely go dark to the lender. They don't open letters. They don't receive phone calls. They, you know, it really becomes something that they hide from and they just don't know what to do. They go, they go in denial and panic mode. And back then, there were a lot of people that had no equity or their house, they owed more on their house than it was worth. Julie just made a point. Between 150 and 200,000, that's the amount of equity that people on average in the United States have in their houses right now. Homes have appreciated something like 20% in the last 12 months, right? What housing, you know, we're still very much in a housing boom. Don't be confused about that. But the moral of the story is, is people will miss payments for all kinds of different reasons. In your marketplace, there might be a spike of unemployment happening or coming soon as some of these companies adjust to what is a recession. 
In that case, there's going to be people that lose their jobs that don't have the ability to make their house payments, but they have massive amounts of equity in their homes. They are not going to necessarily communicate with the lender. They are not going to know what to do. They're going to want to sell the house and move on. We're going to teach you how to do it. We're going to take uh, show you how to have those show those people how to graceful exit from their house and walk and sell their house and walk away with what oftentimes will be a heck of a lot more money than had they let the house go. Um, through the default process because here's what happens and remember this is advanced training but remember i told you this a short sale or like in in terms of um bad to worse okay foreclosure worse short sale second and then a missed payment is right up there what so if someone credit wise you're talking right credit wise so if someone misses one payment Oftentimes, it's as damaging as a short sale, but not as damaging as a full-on foreclosure, right? So what you want to help people do is to miss, is, is to not let them miss a payment. Now, once they have a notice of default filed, it's because they've usually missed two payments. So at that point, you know that people have exercised all their options and what they're going to do to be able to make the house payment. So when you knock on the door and you let them know, Mr. Seller, I have a solution for you to get to sell this house. And if I did my math correctly, and you can check it out here on this net sheet I prepared for you, you're going to be able to walk away with close to $200,000. And, you know, depending on what their credit situation is, they might actually be able to take that $200,000 and then pay cash for a house someplace else. That's right. Or put it down as, a, you know, put 50% down on, you guys get my point? You're creating options for them. Their initial reaction is going to be that of fear, obviously, but your solution is going to make them feel incredibly relieved. You're going to give them a graceful exit from what probably is one of the most stressful situations you've ever experienced in their lives. That is another really amazing thing that comes from having a skill set to, to be of service to people. You're, you don't know, or and I hope you experience, or maybe you have experienced what it feels like to be able to call a seller that didn't think they had any options and explain to them how they can sell their house, walk away with a lot of money, save their credit, um, and then move on with their lives. The nature of the relationship and the conversation you have with that person is, is like something I hope you all experience. But how that makes you feel as a real estate professional is profound. It changes your life because finally you're in sync with your highest and truest purpose on this planet, which is being of service to other people. That's profound. That's how you transcend a lot of these, you know, you guys like to sometimes say you have imposter syndrome. Well, here you go. There's your solution. Actually realize that your highest and truest purpose on this planet is being of service to other people. But in order for you to have that experience, you have to know how to help them, right? And that's what Premier Coaching can be and should be for all of you. That's right. And you know what always astonished me, Tim, from all of our thousands of real estate transactions personally, the most loyal clients ever were, were in two categories. One, for sale by owners, because you did what they couldn't do on their own. And two, the short sale sellers that we helped because we really solved their problem. And we didn't do tons and tons of short sales, but man, were they loyal. Well, not just the short sales, but really anybody that was in a distress situation. Well, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, that's what you meant. Because they, they absolutely had a need. Keeping the house was not an option. And you moved them forward where they were stuck. Very loyal. And statistically, too, once somebody has owned a house... Once their credit gets cleaned up, they have their down payment, whatever, they are going to buy a house again. Well, the solution, if you happen to have a seller that's in that situation today and they have equity in their house, they just are in some sort of temporary problem where they're not making income, here's what you need to do. And I'm just going to give this to you guys and write this down. Have the seller call the lender, tell the lender the problem, the servicer, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whoever it is. And then the lender is going to let them put their mortgage in forbearance so they won't be legally or you know credit wise missing any payments for maybe 60, 90 days, maybe 180 days. And in that time, get the house sold. That way, the person's going to be able to sell the house, going to be able to not have any dings with their credit. And then they're going to walk away with all their equity. And then they're very well, they're very likely going to be able to maybe, depending on how much equity they have, go pay cash for something else. And they're going to love you. Exactly. So you, my suggestion is, is when you're, if you're in a community where you know there's people that are entering into a potentially stress time because of local and uh, local employment situations have the conversations with them tell them not to miss a payment the missed payment is the sort of damocles that they need to avoid explain to them that you have a process that you can help them through counsel them through because you are scared competent skilled competent caring real estate professional and i just gave you the overview of it that it is all waiting for you of course over on premier coaching guys this is the reason that being in a, uh, the real estate business right now is a blessing because there's so many people out there that you can truly profoundly help that is going to make it so that you have a career that you're incredibly proud of having um you know essentially 
earned the right to be successful at. And that's going to be a blessing, not just for you, but for all the people that you're able to help as well. It all comes down to knowing what to say, knowing what to do. And you develop the skill set on the job. You develop the skill set while you're learning. Um, and we love the opportunity to have you be a member of Premier Coaching. And so we're going to move on to part three tomorrow. In part three, we're getting into a little bit more things that require skill. In the meantime, guys, thank you for all your feedback. The inspiration for a lot of our podcasts over the last month or so have been directly from you guys. So please do give us comments. Let us know what you want us to be focusing on, drilling down on. Let us know if you think that maybe, for example, we need to be focusing more on this and less on that. We will definitely listen to your suggestions and cater our content so that we can be helping as many of you as a high, at the highest level. We know it's a stressful, hard time for many of you. We know it's a stressful, hard time for many of your real estate clients. The way through that is for you to be associated with people that have been through it, been there, done that a number of times like Julie and myself and a lot of other members of our premier coaching, uh, coaching team. Um, and yeah, and you guys, listen, you will get through whatever this economy has to throw at you and you will get through it having, frankly, earned the right to be of service to all these people in your community. And the version of you on the other side of having all these experiences built this business that's really built on a reputation of being a true real estate professional, that'll carry you through the rest of your life and beyond. So seriously, take this opportunity to be of service to other people because of this market. Be rejoiceful and thankful that you have a real estate license. Be rejoiceful and thankful that you have the mindset to be of service to other people. Now take action on it. Um, text Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com and we'll pick up on part three tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.